Hey, in this quick video, I'm going to explain how you can work out the relative atomic mass of a given sample given the relative isotopic abundances in that sample. Now, this is an example question I have here, and I'm going to read it out. And this is an example of a sample of chlorine, and what we've got to do is solve this mystery by using the provided abundances of these isotopes to work out the relative atomic mass. So, a sample of chlorine has been found to contain two isotopes of chlorine. Now, looking here, we can see the two isotopes are chlorine 45, chlorine 37. Two isotopes of chlorine. 76% of the atoms in this sample have have been found to be Cl35. This is one isotope and this is the mass number here. This thing here is the mass number. And that's the number of nucleons in that particular isotope. So protons plus neutrons. The, sum, the, the number of 76% uh, of the, the atoms in this sample have been found to be Cl35 or chlorine 35 and 24% of the atoms in the sample have been found to be chlorine 37 work out the AR of the chlorine in this sample okay now looking at this question the first thing I'm looking out for is the isotopes and the percentage abundances of those isotopes provided and I've, I can see that there's two isotopes only and I'm going to group these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to know. I'm 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 thinking. Hmm. Okay, we've got this isotope here, chlorine thirty-five, which I underlined before. And what's the percentage abundance of this? It's seventy-six percent. Okay, so we know that C the the percentage abundance of chlorine is seventy-six percent. So I start up a calculation down here, and the way I set this out is I'm going to have the isotope, the mass numbers of the isotopes multiply that by the percentage abundances on the top added to each other I'll, 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 I'll explain this as I go along divided by 100 in this case because the, the abundances have been given as percentages of that sample I can divide it by 100 when I do mass spec in another video I'll explain why in those cases divided by 100 you cannot always do now the first thing so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get this 35 and I'm gonna do 35 and I can see that the percentage abundance of this is 76 percent so I'm gonna multiply that by 76 and then I'm gonna add that to the same thing of this this isotope so I know that the let's change color here I'm using light blue here what I've got light blue on my answer thing uh purple okay uh, anyway, yeah, purple. So we know that 37 is the isotope, ice, uh, the mass number of this isotope, and we know that its percentage, about the percentage abundance of it in this sample is 24%. So what I'm going to do in this calculation here is I'm going to add 24% to 37. So 37 multiplied by the 24%, and I'm just going to write that percentage as 24 for now. And what we can do. We don't have to do this because the calculator knows that, like, okay, we're going to multiply first and add. But what we can do when we're writing this out so that we know what we're doing and we don't make mistakes is put these in brackets. So we can put that in brackets and put that in brackets. And then what we do, as I said, now what we do, because these are going to create a number which is really big. And the number created is not going to be um, between 35 and 37 because these are like big numbers. What we do is we divide this total that we found by 100. Because imagine, if you imagine you add up these two percentages, 76 plus 24, we're going to get 100. So we divide this whole thing by 100. And what we get is, okay, let me work this out now on my calculator. 35 times 76 plus 37 times 24. And what we get is one hundred. What will uh, divided by one? <laughs> divided by one hundred. 
Um, no, my performance. What we do, what we get, what I get is 36.59 equals 36.59. And you might want to check, once you've got the answer, that this is between the mass numbers of the two isotopes. Just to make sure you haven't made any um, silly mistakes. So I'm looking at this, okay, 36.59, it's close to this, and it's between this and this. So that sounds, that looks about right, 36.59 it is. And let's see, how many decimal places should I give it to? I'll give it to, not, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to three significant figures. So what I'll do is I'll write this, it might, it'll probably give you, it might tell you in a question, give it to this number of significant figures. And if it says that, pay attention to it, because if you don't, do it to that number of significant figures. There's a there's a, there's a possibility that you'll lose marks for doing that. So what I'm gonna do now is write out this right here. So okay, thirty six points. And what I'm gonna do is round this up. So nine, we round that up, and it's gonna produce thirty six point six. So I'm gonna write thirty six point six. And what I can do is just write in brackets here as part of my answer to three, but in brackets three significant figures just to make sure okay it's in three significant it's two three significant figures and that would be my answer and finding out the relative atomic mass is that simple now i'm going to make some more videos for finding out relative atomic mass because there's there's a few there's 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 different situations in which this sort of question can be asked so i'm going to cover those i hope you've benefited from this video that's the end